All right, let's draw. I uh, applied some materials. <laughs> Dang it! Let's see. I applied some materials to this to show you that uh, I actually didn't apply any textures. I just uh, I applied uh, the color seven to show you that uh, you can you can color this, which might come in handy to see what the thing's going to look like, give or take. But I haven't actually UV mapped this thing, or I haven't UV mapped it. I just actually applied colors to the objects to, like I said, kind of get an idea of what this might look like. But what I'm going to do. I'm going to come to File, Open Recent, and I'm going to go to back where it's in gray mode here. And if you remember, last time we basically finished this canopy shape enough to where enough to where it looked. And what I was wanting to do, what I was wanting to show you that I wasn't sure about was which actually I still think I'm going to wait, but uh, I can fill in these uh, these holes where the windows would go. And then you come over in materials and you actually apply materials into the faces and then there's settings for you can tell it to be transparent and kind of pick color and uh, I'll show you real quick if I actually open open recent. This is my Sayran that I drew. The M6A1 Sayran. And this is this is one of the savings I have of it. Anyway, if you see the windshield here, you can't see through the windshield. But the actual glass in this windshield that I have here is uh it's transparent once I render it it would be transparent like if I made a picture of it it would look like glass it wouldn't look like it does in this picture here and this is another model that what I need what I need to do with this model is actually break it down I need to break the tail section uh, and we'll go into this later because I'm going to basically go into the wiki, which you can read for yourself, but I'm going to be going into the wiki as we go through the steps. Uh, but my intent with the Glen is to draw it from the start. And this doesn't have a cockpit in it either. I need, and I need to at least make a basic enough cockpit where that I can put a uh, rear machine gun on this plane and have the seats and stuff in it to where if you're looking at it from in the game that you, you can see the pilot and you can see the little guy in the back and he'll be you know like like you see in War Thunder you have the guy in the back with the uh, you know holding onto the machine gun the rear gunner. You gotta have the rear gunner in there and then the pilot in there. And another thing I need to do with this plane once, because I think what I want to do, I want to put the Glen in first and then I'm going to work on putting this plane into the CDK. And I'll make this, I'll make both of these models available for download. So for some of you that are just watching this for entertainment but you really don't want to draw an airplane along with me or uh, I'm not going to do the video on me redrawing this and or uh, I'm just going to fix this up and then see I have some shading issues on the back here and I also when I made these tails I literally go to edit mode go to dots I literally drew in the framing on this which put a lot of dots into this 
and I don't really, it, it kind of looks good looks good as far as like if you were going to take like I said render pictures of it for artwork and stuff but I really don't need to I really don't need to have the framework like this I can actually just draw basically draw these shapes of these elevators and the rudder and basically I can UV map in those ribs I could I could UV map in the, these shapes and actually I could probably even use these uh, I can take pictures of this and add it to the UV map over the top of the thing it would it would take all those dots out but you would it would still look like this and then in the game same way and actually it might even look better in the game because this doesn't really look like fabric stretched it doesn't have the uh, stretch fabric fabric look it looks more like there's sheet metal between tubes and stuff so anyway let's go back into this come into the one here mm, seven okay, let's select this and if you notice I've left this smooth actually I could take the uh, take it back into the flat mode, but I don't think I really need to. Uh, let's go back to one. Let's go to edit mode, and let's go Z. And basically, what I want to do here, so we'll zoom in here. I don't, I don't. I'm not gonna make this very long tonight, guys. And I know I always say that, and I always do anyway. But uh, kind of wore out. It's late. I've worked all day. Uh, so I'm gonna just try to play with this a little bit, and then we're going to we're gonna call it a day here. Okay. I want to extrude this E on the X axis. And again, I want to come into about actually, on this one, I'm going to come a little bit more. I'm going to make these a little bit bigger now. And we're going to push A. And I want to look at this from the top, Z, or from an angle. Let's say Z. I want this gray. Uh, what I want to do, kind of, is I actually want to grab this one, B, and this one down here, B. And then same thing over here. Let's grab this this one B. This one B. Okay. And let's look at it from above. Let's see it for a second. And I know this doesn't perfectly match this picture, but like I said, what we're trying to do ooh, actually it's interesting. Cause we're actually quite skinnier than the picture. Hmm. There might be something we can do about that, but at the moment, Let's go seven again. Let's go one again. One's one's pretty much lining up, but we go to seven. Seems like we got our canopy a little bit skinny. Actually, if you go from three though, it's wider than the three picture. That's where these pictures don't even line up with each other a little bit. Like I said, so we're gonna have to compromise a little bit. Let's go back to seven and let's go for the time being. Let's go E for extrude, and S for scale, and then Y. Let's stretch that, and that's, oh yeah, okay. 
let's go right about there. Let's go Z. Okay, what I did, yes. And let's go A. And that should be dead flat. I just put a lip there. And later on we're going to draw a lip all the way around that canopy. So like I said, that canopy it'll be thin in some areas but it's gonna end up we're gonna end up kinda like drawing a little like if it was a real airplane it would have th some thickness to it it wouldn't just be uh, sheet metal paper thin and and we're also going to add in we're gonna move these pictures out of the way here so we can look at this straight from behind because we got this picture in our way we're actually gonna draw some ribs into this plane here. We're going to and some of these bottom lines are kind of screwed out and that might not be a problem if we go to object mode. But in edit mode it kind of looks nasty but we're, we're gonna actually put like uh, some ribs like in a real airplane you would have a frame and you'd ha have the skin riveted to it so I wanted this this little these lips in here so that like on a real airplane you could the the canopy would actually slide on that you'd have little rails and stuff we're not gonna we're not gonna draw in the little tracks and that kind of stuff but we wanted the we wanted this little flat lip here so that it was a little bit more realistic and we're gonna push the Z and we're going to gonna zoom down here on the bottom here and as you notice, my belly's starting to curve upward. And so we can either grab, we could just actually grab the bottom vertice. But I think what I want to do is grab those two. And it actually isn't the two, it's there's, we're grabbing three of them. Actually, if I grabbed the bottom one and grabbed it up, it would kind of take that little, uh, that little curve out of it. But actually, when we auto smooth it, it's kind of gone anyway. So let's grab this on the Z and let's go up just a little bit. Right about there. Actually, I'm going to fall out shadow. I'll grab Z. I'm going to grow up a little more gradual. And Z and A. And if we go to object mode. Yeah, see, yeah, okay. Yeah, and I'm not sure. I Like I said, this... What's kind of funny, too, is now that I have drawn airplanes, and I look at some of the models in War Thunder, actually, or even like I'm playing it, my eyeball kind of spots... I kind of spot the little corners and stuff on even some of those planes that you wouldn't see on a real airplane because they literally rolled the, ste the sheet metal in a perfect circle and, or, or an oval or a curve and in 3D graphics you literally have lines and stuff and like I said this part of this is a trick that we have it smoothed out it's just a, it's a trick with the shading and the lights which makes this thing smooth and round but if you really look close on the corners you can see the little uh, edges where it's not perfectly round other than the more dots you have the rounder it'll look but then you end up having end up having whole bunches of uh, whole bunches of vertices and stuff that uh, okay then let's save this right quick save as 9a we'll save it at that we already used 9B. We'll we'll get this to the end. We'll save it as 10. Okay, let's box this again. And let's extrude this to the X. Now at this point, with this uh, window on this airplane, and let's go. Let's let's make those look kind of rectangularly the same. Let's push A. come down here again let's grab these th bottom three let's grab them on the Z let's raise it up out there maybe and again I'll 
go to object mode for Z and Okay, and we have just went a little bit halfways now. Sometimes it's kind of wise. What I do in ship models usually is I'll usually put a line right dead smack in the middle, middle of this thing. But uh, that, like I said, that I have that cursor fairly close to the center of gravity of this aircraft. I'm, you know, but I, and that's just a guess. But I'm guessing it's fairly close because that's usually about where they put a center of gravity is is usually where the pilot is. Not on all aircraft did they do that, but okay, let's go Z. Let's grab the let's box these. Let's extrude to the X. Let's bring this along a little bit more. Now, I don't know if you can see it or not, but somewhere in there in the airplane, they actually raised... Looks like they raised that lip on that. We're, we're not going to worry about that too much, because we're going to kind of do an inner outer thing here. And, or if I have to modify it, modify it a little bit later, I will change it. Actually, I think what I'm going to do on this one now here is, yeah, maybe I'll split the difference on that. Part of me is tempted to come all the way to the seam line here, and then part of me is, oops. Now you don't want to hit E again, you want to hit grab. I had right click the button, if you push G and then X, you notice those dots are still there it's already extruded so if I had hit E again it would have gave us double vertices so anyway like I said I was debating on whether to come here well tell you what let's come here and let's go A and then let's see how this bottom looks and if it looks alright we'll leave it B if it doesn't look okay then then uh, we will loop cut it and add in the center here. Okay. Come down here. And let's go grab on the Z. And let's bring that up a little bit. And yeah, that doesn't look too bad. I actually think probably what would be smart in this case now, though, how this thing's curving up, is we should actually grab these three bottom ones here. Might have should have even done that on the last one. Let's grab them and Z, and let's bring all three of these up right about there. Let's go Z, and let's take a gander with that. Let's look at object mode. Excuse me a second. <coughs> oh. Must be allergic to work. <laughs> okay. So if you notice now. And again, the top, the top and the side doesn't don't match exactly, but they're, you know, they're fairly close, but they don't match exactly. So we might have to, we might have to actually shift, take the top picture and shift it back a little bit. And uh, one of the problems here too is that the canopy looks one way and the body of an airplane if we push Z let's go to edit mode edit mode push Z if you notice our plane is actually actually, actually fairly straight there believe it or not and it looks like it's starting to taper in just a hair but part of that's kinda Actually, it looks like it's just tapering a little bit on this last part, actually. So I think the trick here will be uh, we want to grab all of these except for that. So we want to box it here and box it here and box it here. 
Box it here. Box these three. And we want to catch these ones here that we missed. So we want all of them, but we don't want that. We don't want the that lip on the window. So we come back to seven. We go to Z. We're going to scale this to the Y, and we're going to bring this in just a hair because the airplane's starting to taper now. But as we taper it, we don't want to taper that lip too much. But what we also want to avoid is okay that. I think that's not too bad. We got to kind of watch. We want to taper the body a little bit, but we don't want to because uh, it's going to taper and it's going to get it's going to get less and less round as it goes aft, and it's going to start turning more into a big oval shape, kind of. So, and I don't know if you notice this, but uh, I hit Z. This airplane, more or less, where I have it drawn right now, the body of this plane is more or less ribs and sheet metal, and you can see the rivets. And then all of a sudden, it looks like the back of the airplane is uh, like wood or maybe aluminum, uh, aluminum uh, stringers and like cloth. I think the back part, I think the back part of this plane is basically all fabric. The the the, the uh, rudder, the, uh, the vertical stabilizer, uh, the little bot. They got a little bit of a stabilization fin on the bottom. If we uh, go to seven here, and it looked like they might have put a little bit of section of sheet metal in here for reinforcement. Your uh, elevators and your Horizontal stabilizers actually have these uh, connecting connecting support rods that hold them in place. And if you notice, there's there's this white square up here. That's actually a hole. And part of what that hole is for is that you can these actually are hinged to where they're folded up when it's stored inside of the submarine and the wings actually detach from the plane. Let's go push Z again. And object mode. So what we have just done is we have the airplane drawn to the point that th this is this is all made from sheet metal with some framing. And then of course they have a, a support mount on the front where they would mount the engine and we're going to work on the engine in a different episode here but we have this plane's body drawn to where it goes from being sheet metal basically to fabric and I think the bottom down here I think if you look at this little line that comes down behind the wing I think this is sheet metal also so part of the bottom of this plane is sheet metal and one of the things I want to do, we'll go to there, let's go into, let's go into E14, and I've already looked up some of the stuff, so let's see if we can get our, okay, we got images here. And like I said, I go on here a lot and I actually look at, uh, Look at these images and stuff, and I could order a book, but I don't. I don't think I need to order a book. And some of these black and white pictures, like this, this kind of gives you an idea of the size. You can see the guys, where these guys, how big their head is inside of this airplane, and how tall they're sitting. Because uh, I seen a picture of how this machine gun, base in the rear, is it's stowed away behind this guy, this observer or whatever you want to call him. And I seen a picture of it. Like here's a picture of it. You can kind of see the machine gun here uh, inside the airplane. And that's and actually this is one of the pictures I'm using. We're using this for this tutorial. Is this one right here? And then I kept 
popping along. Here's a picture of the model of the cockpit, which we might be using for reference of the model of the cockpit. And you had to be careful. There's a few planes in here. And this is where I got the picture, and I put it in GIMP for the uh, basically the front. And this is actually one of the later versions of the plane, which is kind of interesting because it's not the same. It's it's actually different. It's an upgraded model or whatnot. This one wouldn't be bad if this was really clear and we could use this one because this actually basically shows you the whole shape as you go backwards. Although I think we can kind of can we can kind of figure it out. This is actually a picture of a model which is interesting. But anyway, you can you can figure a lot of things out. Now see this isn't even a Glenn. This is this is a Jake or something. This is a much larger plane. And I actually have a model of this plane. Like I said, I might be digging this the model of the plane out for references. So this gives you a kind of idea. You can see that lip I was talking about on there. And so on and so forth. Here's a nice picture of a big remote control uh Glenn that the guy as it was a submarine it was on. There's an orange hand. Let me let me X see if I can find this picture of the machine gun. Oh, here it is. So this shows the machine gun, and if you look at this machine gun, especially pointing up like this, it it, it gives you the idea that uh, like the guy in the back would be aiming really high, but but actually you seen how his head was in that airplane. It, if, uh, if he basically turned around and stood up and he probably had a retaining strap to hold him into the airplane so or and or his seat might have been even I don't know if they had a seat that swiveled some of these planes had a seat that swiveled all the way around and raised up enough to where the guy could basically seat belt him in the himself in the back but as you can see this uh, there was probably a real danger of this 30 caliber machine gun what the gunner had to watch what he was doing, or he'd be putting holes in the tail of this plane because it's the way the way the back end's built, you know. Uh, but they they planned a lot of time. Usually they didn't fly at a very high altitude. They actually usually flew at a low altitude, and with and, and or, or if they were attacked, they would probably actually fly down close to the surface so that the uh, they would want to try to position themselves so the attacking aircraft would come in at a uh, high angle. Here's a picture of the uh, uh, horizontal stabilizers and elevators actually in the folded up position. And you can't really see it real clear, but there's kind of the, the uh, machine gun framing and stuff. I was talking about how the machine gun, he'd pull it out basically on a big swivel mechanism and the uh, Sayran's a lot similar with that aspect. So this is this is pretty fairly interesting aircraft that they actually built these because I, I kind of joke that they're overpowered Cessnas which is not really true. They I mean they, the Cessna has like a four cylinder engine this thing has a nine-cylinder engine, but the uh, I think the first models of these only had oh goodness, maybe 450 horsepower, 500 horsepower, which is actually quite a bit more than a Cessna. But uh, anyway, you 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 can do the same thing what I'm doing. You can look up images and look at these things, but it, it's good to have images to give you an idea, you know, give, give, give you an idea of, of how the scale of this plane, how, how small it was in a way. Because it, it's an okay size plane, but if you put this next to a like a P-40 or a Thunderbolt or something, it just it wasn't a huge plane. This, I'm not sure, I think this is a picture and you can notice that the, that the uh, rudder and the uh, vertical stabilizer I think this was like the second model, but the uh, they're they're at the same height, and I'm not sure, but I think this I think this is a picture of the actual guy that flew over uh, Oregon and dropped a, two little bombs. They tried to set a forest fire, basically. Is this this was the only plane that actually flew and dropped bombs on the continental United States? 
was one of these and and you can look that article up too or I'll look it up maybe and do a video on it because it, it was kind of interesting this 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 pl plane claims the fame of actually bombing the continental United States even though it was uh, it didn't really work it didn't set the forest fires it had been pretty wet that year and now this uh, this picture is real crappy. It's been clear before. This is actually an Arata 196 German airplane, and it's kind of interesting because the uh, the Arata 196 actually looks a lot like a Glenn, but it's a little bit it's quite a bit bigger. Here's another one that's a uh, Arata 196, and I actually have saved clearer pictures of this, but. Uh, Anyway, let's let's go out of here and let's uh, go back into Blender and let's save this. Actually, maybe I like to go full screen here. Let's save this one more time. Save as, and we're gonna make this a 10. We're gonna make this Glen 10A. Save as a Blender file, and we're gonna call that good for tonight. And we'll do some more drawing tomorrow. We'll start maybe working on the rest of this. Uh, we'll keep stretching this body out, and we're gonna basically stretch this body out to the back window, and then we're going to uh, put a little retaining wall on it and stuff. And then, or we'll work on framing and and like I was talking about and uh, the aircraft frame. Because we want this, we want to draw this for the CDK so that it can get its tail shot off, basically. So they want this a model in basically four uh, objects. We might actually make this in six objects. We might make it to where they can shoot off the uh, floats also. So I've saved it. The the wings have to be separate, and the wings have to be made in two pieces, give or take, so that they'll break off which I think is part of the damage model, but uh, like I said, they basically want it into four pieces, but we might draw this into about six or eight pieces just to be a little bit more complex, but it'll give it more of a realistic feeling if uh, if if I'm not overthinking this. It'll give it more of a realistic fe feeling when if you're being chased down by a yak or a whatever adversary and they start shooting bullets in you and you have the capability of them shooting your tail off, shooting the back end of the tail off, shooting the middle part of the plane off and uh, and or the floats we have to make the damage model for the propeller and as far as I know this propeller was wood so we'll go into that and thanks for watching part 13 we'll see you in part 14